Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tom, and I'll be um, presenting you uh, automatic image enhancement with uh, yeah, Claro Premedia server. What I'll do is I'll take you through a, a couple of slides first, uh, uh, presenting uh, the Claro Premedia solution, uh, giving you an insight on uh, how it works, and then uh, we'll switch over to a demonstration uh, showing you how that works in uh, in practice. Small introduction on the company uh, first. So LPCAL has been around for uh, quite a while, founded in 1997 uh, as a result of a management buyout of the uh, electronic imaging division of uh, uh, the famous camera builder uh, uh, Hasselblad, has been involved in digital imaging techniques when the animal still spoke, uh, so uh, since the 80s. Um, and has offices uh, in the Netherlands and in Germany. Development is being done in the Netherlands. Uh, customers around the world, mainly in the, uh, in the publishing markets, uh, in the newspaper markets, and uh, the magazine publishing markets. We see that catalog publishing, photo book uh, uh, production, um, are also customers that have an increased interest in uh, the, uh, the alpical solutions. Uh, the company is small and innovative, uh, uh, meaning that it can respond to uh, customer demands quite quickly and make uh, uh, adaptations uh, uh, to its, uh, uh, its software quite rapidly, uh, which becomes more and more rare these days. So uh, also that flexibility is important to, uh, to keep in mind. We'll go through this uh, a couple of times through this presentation for those people who are new to automatic image enhancement or people that know other products, uh, you know, more legacy products. Uh, it, this is, uh, is something that is uh, important to understand is that the Claro technology is built on a thorough image uh, analysis. And it is that analysis that will be used to, actu to actually dynamically uh, and image specifically uh, uh, make uh, uh, the enhancement of the, uh, the, the, the images. The goal of Claro is to enhance images, uh, but also to standardize the quality. Uh, so what we will set in the configuration is the target quality that we want to achieve of specific images. Uh, this means that uh, uh, when uh, the, uh, the images are enhanced, that it can be both very subtle on already good quality uh, images, but also that it can be uh, much more aggressive on bad quality images. Obviously, the goal is also to detect problem images and to route them to an operator, and that actually brings me to uh, yeah, another element of the uh, uh, automatic image enhancement workflow. Obviously, uh, yeah, the goal is to enhance the quality of incoming images and to do that as automated as possible, but we also go from the point of view that not all images can be processed uh, yeah, automatically and that, therefore, uh, workflow is very important. Alpical has the flexibility to be inserted in the workflow at any stage both in the very beginning at the reception, but also in connection to the editorial workflows uh, or at the very end. Uh, we'll come back on, uh, on, on that. The goal is not to just automatically enhance images, but also to increase uh, your operator productivity on those images that would still require operator intervention because those images, they will uh, certainly in certain environments continue to exist. If we look at the product, it's a, yeah, it's a server application for local installation. It's got a web-based user interface. It works with hot folders. Uh, and as I mentioned, it can be set up as a fully automatic or as a semi-automatic workflow. Uh, and once again, you'll get a, a better view on that uh, once I show that to you. Um, the semi-automatic workflow allows you to uh, tie into Photoshop, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned also, the software can be integrated in the workflow at any uh, stage of that workflow uh, and therefore uh, also has an integration with InDesign uh, to submit images uh, uh, from uh, within the page layout. The software is multiprocessor aware up to four concurrent images processes on a single license. 
but can then also be fully load balanced and configured with automatic failover. It has a flexible and open interface uh, through uh, either XML job tickets or web services API. When we'll uh, look at the Photoshop inspector, the Photoshop inspector is actually a, a standalone application that will interact with Photoshop. What the Photoshop inspector will allow you to do is you'll be able to set up a workflow where either all the images or specific problematic images uh, can be rerouted uh, to that inspector and where the operator will be able to uh, view the original image and the processed image side by side in Photoshop. Optionally, the operator can further tweak the images, uh, uh, obviously, in Photoshop and has all the tools in Photoshop to do that and then can take uh, uh, that image back into the workflow. The Photoshop inspector allows an operator both to just view the original and the processed image side by side just as as an approval workflow, but as the interaction is there with Photoshop and not in uh, a separate application, uh, you also have all the tools of Photoshop available to make uh, further corrections and adjustments to uh, whatever uh, image you want to continue with. And once again, we'll see that in the demo. And here's a, uh, a quick screenshot of uh, you know, what that looks like. The InDesign job client is another add-on application to Claro, which uh, allows you to submit images to Claro from within a, uh, your InDesign environment. Claro will crop, resample, enhance, and color convert all the images according to the page geometry, as it says here. There's a big advantage uh, in uh, doing later stage image optimization, as I would call it. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you could either uh, optimize images, all incoming images and all raw images before they're being placed in your layout. That is certainly one route to go. And up to a couple of years ago, that was, uh, I would say, the most used workflow. We've seen an increased tendency of integrating a solution like uh, Claro uh, into editorial systems, but we also see uh, an adoption of much smaller organizations using Alpical Claro that don't necessarily have a true uh, enterprise editorial system. Therefore, there is this application uh, called the InDesign Job Client, uh, which is a, a scripted plugin into InDesign, from which you can submit images individually or an entire page, uh, all the images on a page, or uh, yeah, all the images in a document uh, to Claro. The big advantage of that is that the image optimization becomes context aware. Uh, that means that um, for the analysis, it is only the crop information that will be used in order to, uh, to further optimize the image. Optionally, you can also choose to hard crop the image to the part that is used in the page layout, uh, significantly reducing the file size that you will have at the end of your output. And this is a quick screen capture of uh, what that uh, job client looks like. Once again, we'll go into more detail on that during uh, the demo. I mentioned the importance of uh, workflow. As I said, uh, Claro can easily be integrated uh, through uh, uh, an, an XML job file or a, a API, a web services API. Alpical also, but, and that, that would typically be used in editorial systems. There's existing uh, integrations with the most known editorial systems uh, out there, whether that would be Woodwing or Vue or Atex uh, or CCI, all these uh, uh, integrations have been done uh, already. Um, there are also integrations with existing automation products. Uh, there is an existing integration with the Enfocus switch product, but also with the laid back file train product. So if, if you want to integrate this not into your editorial workflow, but rather in your uh, production automation workflow, uh, this can also be done. At the same time, Claro offers some of that functionality that you would see in those production automation products as part of the solution itself as well uh, through the routing channels. The routing channels basically allow you to uh, route 
uh, uh, files uh, to uh, one processing channel or another uh, based on its specific characteristics, uh, whether that is physical size or metadata or color space. All these elements can be taken into account to send it uh, uh, to, to to send the file to uh, one processing channel or another. Uh, basically, this allows you to create a one-to-many workflow where you would have one big basket where all uh, files come in uh, and then based on that metadata and technical data, uh, you would be able to route that to uh, the uh, correct channel for optimal processing. If we look at uh, yeah, the supported file formats, uh, yeah, obviously all the common image, common image file formats are supported. So we're talking about TIFF, EPS, PNG, GIF, BMP, uh, yeah, all those file formats that we all know uh, yeah, are supported, but also raw files uh, yeah, are supported. It mentions here on the slide that there's comprehensive uh, yeah, PSD support, so photo Photoshop file format support. Um, what that actually means is that there's comprehensive support uh, not only for Photoshop file formats, but more generally speaking for multi-layered file formats. Uh, so also TIFFs uh, can contain multiple layers. Uh, Claro uh, recognizes those layers and can leave them intact, creating an additional layer that contains the flattened version of all the underlying layers, and you would be able to uh, optimize only that one uh, your compatibility layer, as, uh, uh, as we call it, keeping all the original layers uh, intact in that one image. There's also the possibility to uh, process PDF files, and when I mentioned uh, uh, that uh, Claro can be uh, input in uh, various parts of the workflow, there is a tendency to shift more towards the end uh, uh, of the workflow. Um, so what we see is that as uh, RGB workflows uh, uh, become more popular, that also the image processing is done at the very end. Uh, the advantage of that is that it could be done uh, media specific, so that if you have uh, your PDFs that are created uh, either for different print processes uh, and or uh, for uh, print and digital consumption that you can do actually the, uh, the, the, the image optimization specifically for a specific media at the very end of your workflow. So therefore, uh, LPCAL also digests uh, your PDFs, obviously unflattened PDFs, because otherwise the image is cut up in, uh, in, in different pieces, uh, if there is transparency being used on top of that, of that image. So uh, images will be uh, extracted, optimized, and reinserted into the PDF if you would choose that workflow. So we'll go into the demo now. Before I show you uh, what we see here is uh, yeah, the actual uh, configuration interface, but uh, before we go into that, uh, I want to show you how the software works from uh, an operator point of view uh, and very specifically how uh, the inspector works. Also show you a little bit what uh, the quality looks like. So what I'll do is I have a, a set of images here and I'll simply copy those uh, into the hot folder. Claro will start processing those. As I mentioned, I have my Claro inspector. So I'll open my inspector. There it is. And when the green light turns on here, I will have found the connection with the server. So as I mentioned, uh, this is actually a standalone uh, yeah, application, the uh, Claro inspector that will connect uh, 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 and interact with Photoshop. When this next button starts blinking, that means that there's images that are ready for my review. Um, so I'll just uh, go ahead and click that. You will actually see now the images side by side. On the left hand side we have the original image uh, yeah, as it mentions here in the file name and here on the right uh, we've got the corrected image. In addition to that, I have here in the inspector some information, the channel that is being used, uh, the original name of, uh, of, of the image, um, and then I'll also be able uh, to see some specific information on the processing and whether there's any specific quality warnings. So here it is mentioned that this is a, a noisy image, 
that is most probably the case due to the background that is being used, uh, but we actually also see that it is quite noisy uh, in uh, some of these other uh, elements in the picture. What we have here now is we th this interface has uh, dynamically changed a little bit. Uh, I can now uh, choose between the original and the processed image. I will go ahead and choose uh, uh, the, the, the processed image. Um, and uh, here I am again uh, with that next image blink and that's then the result for this image here. Now it's also, it's always a little bit daunting uh, to, uh, to know how you're viewing this through uh, GoToWebinar. I hope that you can see, clearly see the differences and uh, the, uh, the, the increase in quality. Obviously, there's always some subjectivity involved, so I've used the default settings here. Uh, these settings can be tweaked, as I will show you uh, uh, later on, uh, how, that, how that can be done. I've not only selected uh, uh, relatively good quality images, I've also selected some poor uh, images, both from a subject point of view as from a quality point of view. But you'll see that the level of detail that you get out of this chair, for instance, uh, is significantly better also in the cutlery uh, uh, that stands out much more uh, from the tablecloth. The way that that picture is taken still isn't great but it shows you at least what the, uh, the technology does. Here we have literally a box shot of old boxes that shows you some of that quality and it shows you what Claro can do with these type of images. And I'll show you one more where once again, there's only so much one can do with uh, an image, but clearly there is much more detail coming out of this part uh, of the image than uh, compared to the original. So I've deliberately taken some uh, uh, really bad quality uh, uh, images to show you what that does. Also here, clearly the color cast is gone, getting much more neutral images. And even here on this food picture where we would can easily say that, generally speaking, we already have a relatively good quality image. Uh, the crispiness of this meat and the grape here uh, comes out much clearly uh, uh, on the enhanced uh, uh, image compared to the original one. If, if we then look uh, a little bit at uh, uh, how you can further operate the inspector, obviously we've got a view on the queue, the images that are still waiting for us. I uh, uh, get an overview of the name, the channel it has been processed with, uh, uh, whether there is a specific message uh, or not. Uh, and if there is any specific metadata that uh, uh, is being used in that image. I can then go ahead and click any image to uh, process that uh, first. Uh, if I get uh, uh, the question to process a specific image uh, with a certain priority, I can do that. I can feed that back into the workflow. So that's the queue for you. I could still filter specific, could apply specific filters, or I could uh, uh, search for specific images. And if I'm in a hurry, um, I could simply say, well, you know what? I'm going to select them all uh, and I want to use the, the, the processed ones uh, yeah, all together. So that's the inspector on the setup end. This uh, yeah, allows us to uh, define which uh, channels I want to watch. So I've got four different configurations on the server side. Uh, this particular inspector instance is uh, looking at two channels. Uh, if I've got multiple publications, for instance, this would allow me uh, to uh, configure work groups of image operators, specific work group looking at a specific set of titles and another uh, work group looking at another set uh, of titles. There's some other gadgets here such as I can play a sound if a new image uh, arrives. Uh, I can obviously tile the images as I've done so um, and I can select a uh, zoom percentage uh, here. Uh, I always choose to open the images in 100% because that gives me the most accurate view on what the quality of that image looks like, but I could also set it to auto so that uh, yeah, it scales to fit the, uh, the, the image in, in the window. If I want to do so, I can also choose a specific Photoshop version. So uh, that's the Photoshop uh, yeah, inspector. Before I uh, move on to uh, the configuration, what I'll actually do, I will show you the InDesign 
uh, job client. So what I have here is a InDesign document. And when I install this job client, uh, this menu, uh, Claro JC, Claro job client, uh, yeah, is added uh, yeah, to my InDesign menu. What I can do here, uh, yeah, as you see, is um, I can select either specific images. So I can select this image and say, you know what, I only want to add those uh, yeah, images to the optimization queue. I can select uh, yeah, all the images on the page or all the images in a document. Then what I can do is I can choose the channel that I want to process these images with. Um, and I can also say, well, I want to send a specific message to the inspector. This is a very useful tool to uh, set up a communication uh, between uh, the, the page layouter and uh, uh, the image operator. Uh, whatever I put in this, please add some blue, some blue, whatever I put into this message, uh, regardless of how my workflow is configured, I, uh, this particular image will be uh, rerouted to the inspector and actually here in uh, uh, the, the message tab, the image operator will see, will, will get this message to please add some blue. So, so that can certainly be uh, very handy. Now uh, I'll deselect that and I won't use that this time. Uh, I will simply use all the images on this page. I will add them um, and I will uh, start the processing. Now. I'll come back to this while this is processing uh, and uh, yeah, I'll show you what the configuration of uh, Claro looks like. Here we have uh, the four default channels uh, yeah, that are being delivered with Claro. Obviously you can create as many channels as you want uh, yeah, and what we see is that uh, yeah, many people are using the default channels with some uh, yeah, minor tweaking. You can also create multiple groups. Uh, so if you want to keep, uh, if you have many channels and you want to all keep them uh, somewhat organized, uh, this is also something that you can do by creating these uh, uh, these groups. I've got one default group just uh, here. So going into uh, yeah, the configuration of such a channel, uh, what you'll see is a number of different tabs that will allow you further configuration. On the input side, we've got uh, the ability to select an input hot folder. Uh, we can scan subfolders, we can remove empty, uh, empty subfolders, and we can give uh, a channel a specific priority. On the uh, input conversion side, what is very important to know is that uh, all the image optimization is actually done in uh, RGB. So it is preferable to throw RGB images uh, and have the original RGB images uh, yeah, for input uh, yeah, for Claro. Uh, however, we've got customers, quite a number of customers, who also have CMYK images because they don't have anything else. Um, then those images, they will be converted internally uh, yeah, by Claro to RGB and will be optimized then and reconverted to CMYK afterwards. Uh, the feedback that we get from that is that that also gives very good results. So um, uh, while we always recommend to provide RGB images as an input to Claro, it can certainly handle uh, CMYK images as well, uh, knowing that obviously there will be a, a double conversion to RGB and back to CMYK afterwards. I can define the rendering intent that uh, uh, will be used. And uh, here already at the very beginning, I've got uh, uh, some multi-layer image options. Uh, so I can actually define which is uh, the image that, uh, which is the layer that I want to process. Uh, typically we'll choose the compatibility layer, um, but you can also choose the top visible, the top uh, real one, the uh, bottom visible, the, the, the bottom real one. Uh, a uh, layer with a specific name or layer zero or the compatibility layer uh, yeah, in that case. When it comes to size, um, we've got uh, uh, different uh, uh, settings here. First of all, we can change uh, uh, the, the, the resolution. We uh, often get the question, can I upsample the images? Uh, yes, obviously you can upsample the image, but uh, there is no magic in, in, in that. But when, when it comes to size, we uh, have the width, the height uh, that we can set. Um, we could also uh, define uh, yeah, the maximum image uh, size. Uh, 
uh, and we can change the orientation based on exit information. So that's when it comes to size, when it comes to the quality check. Uh, first of all, we can define to uh, reject or not reject a, uh, bad images. We can do that on different levels. We have the color balance, uh, the brightness, the sharpness, and the noise that we can reject images on, and we can do that uh, either flexible, very strict, or not at all. Then we can also reject uh, uh, images uh, with a color gamut that is larger than a certain percentage. Uh, or if they have been resized more than a specific factor. We could also reject images that are in CMYK that have no embedded profile or uh, images with red eyes. This is uh, uh, basically, if we are in a semi-automatic workflow, a way uh, to filter images that we want to send to the inspector. As I mentioned before, uh, we can either uh, send all uh, yeah, images for review to an operator and to the Photoshop uh, yeah, inspector, or uh, we can uh, do only problem images. In that sense, this allows us to define what uh, will be identified as problem images. I'll come back on the red eyes as well, because typically we get quite a, a, a number of questions uh, on that. Here uh, in the workflow, and quite logically as a consequence of this uh, yeah, quality check, um, I can choose to process all images and save them to an output folder. I can send the rejected images to the inspector. I can save the rejected images uh, uh, to an unprocessed folder, or I can send all images to the inspector. You see that this is uh, uh, the option that was activated for uh, this workflow. And this is also the reason why all the images that I had copied into the hot folder were um, were routed to the inspector in the uh, in the earlier demo that I've shown you. We can uh, apply output conversion before uh, uh, the inspector either. Uh, and or on the original and the processed image. So if you want to compare, I would say, uh, colored apples with colored apples, uh, you could say that uh, I want uh, uh, the output profile also on the original image as well as on the processed image. Or if you really want to see everything that has been done uh, by Claro, uh, including the color conversion, then obviously you would not select that, that option. If you have a corrupted image, uh, then uh, uh, you can always define an email address uh, and get a notification of the fact that an image is corrupt. That will just let you know that that specific image has not been processed, but obviously the software will continue to process all other images in the queue. Here we come in the image enhancement uh, uh, section. While it takes a little getting used to, uh, I believe that from all the different solutions that I've seen out there for uh, uh, image uh, uh, automatic image optimization, uh, this is one of the more intuitive solutions. There are other vendors out there that will brag uh, about the fact that they have more than 600 parameters that they that that you can tweak and uh, adjust. Uh, that's all great, but then you have to know what these 600 parameters all mean and can do for you. Here. We have a fairly simple yet very powerful uh, uh, interface um, where I said you can uh, uh, dynamically uh, uh, act, well, you can actually define what the output quality is that you want to achieve. To make sure that you, uh, you understand this correctly, uh, here we have a tick box uh, where we will say, okay, I want to analyze and potentially correct the sharpness, yes or no. So uh, this is um, the, the first thing that you will uh, uh, that you will do here. Here we, we we obviously have it all ticked, and then the potentially confusing part is that when this parameter is actually set to zero, that means that this is the default value. So if I have a very unsharp image, if I have this box ticked, and when this is here on zero, I. Uh, uh, Obviously, the, uh, the, 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 there will still be uh, unsharp masking that is being uh, applied here. The slider here allows me to set the level of sharpness that I want to achieve. So zero would be uh, averagely sharp images, um, but if I don't like my images uh, 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 sharp or if the subject does not uh, uh, lend itself to, to, to having uh, very sharp images, then uh, I, I can uh, obviously decrease that. If I have uh, a subject that 
that demands very, very sharp images. And I would say something like watches or, or something. If you've got a, a watch catalog uh, yeah, where you want to get, or, or a jewelry catalog where you really want to get uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the latest and, and last crispy detail out of uh, yeah, every image, uh, then you can obviously uh, yeah, increase that. That will be applied individually uh, uh, to uh, to each image. Same goes for this brightness, the contrast, the saturation. You can set the black and white point. You can uh, uh, apply a, a noise filter uh, on noisy images, and then you can apply uh, your local contrast for shadows and uh, your, or for highlights. Uh, the local contrast uh, is actually something that uh, in 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 a Photoshop workflow uh, you can only achieve with masking uh, uh, images. It would be uh, masking the shadow area uh, and getting the most out of the highlights and vice versa. This will allow you to, uh, to handle that automatically. Color balance will neutralize the image, so will remove any color cast out of the images. Uh, so that's the uh, generic image enhancement, I would say. Then we've got uh, your color specific or subject specific uh, yeah, enhancements. Uh, yeah, this on uh, the red eyes, so we can remove red eyes. Uh, we can remove red eyes only when a flash is being used according to the EXIF information. Um, and then we can apply the strength of the red eye removal. The, the strength will basically define the color gamut that is being affected uh, yeah, by this correction. Uh, and this is actually a um, a parameter that we'll find back later on. Basically, if I increase this, uh, yeah, the zone of uh, uh, affected uh, in the eyes, uh, the area of, of colors affected uh, uh, by this correction will be larger. Then uh, we've got specific corrections for skin tones, for green tones, and for blue tones. Skin tones, quite obviously, will, where we will be able to adjust the tone by itself. Once again, we find this strength uh, slider back here. So if I uh, increase the strength, uh, then a larger area of colors uh, will be affected by the correction. Um, but I don't necessarily have to do a tonal adjustment. I can uh, deselect the, the, the tone adjustment and just play on uh, the saturation and uh, the brightness of my skin tones. So that is also something that I could, uh, could do. Um, for the skin tones and for the red eyes, uh, uh, there is face recognition technology uh, uh, that is being used. While that is not that has no other applications uh, within the software, there is face recognition uh, 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 technology uh, that uh, is specifically being used to uh, to remove those red eyes uh, yeah, and to uh, detect skin tones. Um, when it comes to green tones, we find back the, uh, the the same parameters, so we can adjust the the, the tone. Uh, uh, and then uh, apply the strength, saturation, and the brightness. Uh, so for anything that is natural, uh, your greens like grass or leaves, uh, uh, this uh, uh, allows me to, uh, uh, to to have that the tonality uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and and the brightness and uh, uh, and saturation that I want it to have. And the same co goes for natural blues when it comes to skies or sea surfaces or lakes. Uh, uh, this can all be uh, specifically enhanced uh, with those uh, settings. In the PDF tab, uh, we have uh, a number of specific settings that uh, uh, have to do uh, with processing PDF files. Uh, we could choose not to process CMYK uh, images in PDF documents. Uh, the logic behind that is that uh, yeah, if we are in a publication and we're doing late correction uh, yeah, on a finally approved PDF, then maybe that CMYK image that is in there is already an approved ad uh, that we don't necessarily want to correct um, and that uh, yeah, the RGB images that are in there are actually editorial images uh, and those we do want to correct. So that is certainly an option that we uh, that we want to keep in there. We could skip specific images in uh, your files that have uh, your specific metadata uh, in there. And then both the, the, the first one as uh, yeah, this one do not process images with few colors 
are actually uh, a, a way to circumvent uh, or not process uh, uh, images that are actually not real images that need to be processed. So I could have a logo that is in a BMP format uh, uh, or anything like that. Uh, th those are not the images that we really want to enhance. We want to leave them as much as is. Uh, yeah, and that is something that we can do uh, in there. Um, if I want to repurpose, if the only thing that I have is a PDF that is being delivered to me by a, a system or a, a customer, I could also extract all the images from the PDF to a, a, a specific folder. So that could be a, a very handy function that you have right there. When it comes to output, uh, basically, we define the ICC profile for color images, for black and white images. Um, the standard default uh, rendering intent that is being used is the perceptual uh, color metric uh, one. But uh, here I can say if uh, a specific percentage of my colors is uh, out of uh, gamut, uh, then I want to use, for instance, the relative colorimetric one with black with compensation. That is uh, uh, the option that I have there. I uh, can embed my uh, uh, profile in, uh, uh, in the output file. Um, I could uh, uh, convert uh, black and white images using the ICC profile or uh, using a mix of color channels. Then on the output side, uh, I have my uh, destination folder. Uh, I can choose which file format uh, I want to have on the output side. Um, so I can uh, choose either the original uh, uh, file format uh, uh, that I had on the input, then a, uh, a JPEG, TIFF, a Photoshop, a, uh, EPS in all different flavors, uh, GIF or PNG. And then when it comes to the multi-layered options that I have, I can keep the original layers. Uh, I could only keep the original layers if they contain alpha or masking channels. But what I could also do here, and this is uh, quite interesting as well, is I could have a single layered uh, uh, image uh, uh, for which I create a multi-layered image that contains both the original and the processed uh, uh, image in a separate layer. Uh, and I can give those uh, layers a name. I can add a compatibility layer. I can preserve the alpha mask channels and so on and so forth. Then when it comes to XMP options, so to metadata, I can uh, add uh, yeah, either the channel settings, the log, uh, so everything that has happened to that file, uh, yeah, specific inspector information, I can add that all to uh, yeah, the, 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 the metadata uh, yeah, feed uh, so that all that data is stored uh, with the image at all time. Um, I could potentially also use that information uh, uh, for uh, routing uh, in my uh, production automation system. I can give the file name a prefix and extension and then send it uh, uh, to uh, uh, a specific uh, folder, copy it uh, uh, to a specific folder uh, uh, or send it to an FTP destination. Just for your information, uh, on the advanced side, I've avoided to go into the advanced parameters, uh, uh, not to take too much of your time. Uh, but on the advanced uh, side, on the output, I can also strip all metadata if I want to. Um, the metadata has a tendency of uh, making the images heavier, but also it might contain actually information that uh, is not to be seen by the outside. And then uh, if uh, those images are being uh, taken up in a, in a digital publication, it would be relatively uh, easy for anybody to, uh, to, to look into that metadata. So you can strip that metadata out of here. You uh, can add Photoshop guides for soft crop. And that that is something that is actually quite interesting um, is that if there's an integration with uh, an editorial system or uh, if you send files from the InDesign job client as I've just done uh, earlier um, and you actually are using you, you, you are using only one specific part uh, of the image um, you've cropped it uh, then uh, with this option, you will actually be able to add Photoshop guides uh, of the part of the image that is being used in your publication. So the uh, image operator will be able to see which is the part that has been used for the analysis and which is the part of the image that will be actually only used in the publication. So that's uh, yeah, quite handy uh, as well.
And then I can also add a watermark uh, to, uh, to the image uh, on a part of the image, define the transparency, the position, and the color. So this is uh, how I set up Claro. I have a full log here that I, uh, will tell me what has happened uh, to the different images uh, that I've um, uh, set there. Uh, if there would be any error, uh, I'll be able to uh, see that here. And here I see a, a, a monitor of uh, which channel has processed how many uh, uh, images. From the inspector tab, I can uh, download uh, the add-on applications. So here I can add, download the inspector application and the job client uh, application. I will not go into the settings assistant as this is an application that will disappear. Here I uh, have a schedule. Uh, uh, the schedule actually allows me to schedule specific uh, channels on a specific time. Just to give one very clear uh, example is if I've got 24-hour production, uh, but uh, uh, not necessarily 24-hour manpower, uh, and if uh, I have uh, a channel set up uh, to route images to the inspector, um, I could actually, during the night time, uh, say clear the inspector uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, and, and switch it off uh, so that I actually, from a certain time uh, yeah, at night, I start going to fully automated uh, production with Claro. So that's that. What I'll do is, meanwhile, I'll go and see if uh, uh, our images are uh, updated. I would be very surprised if they weren't uh, uh, yet. So meanwhile, in the InDesign part, uh, we have our, uh, our updated uh, uh, images. Um, here also, within InDesign, we can see a before and after just by hitting the space bar, by selecting an image and hitting the space bar, I see before uh, and, uh, yeah, and after on those uh, yeah, images. So I hope you can see that too. That allows us to see before and after uh, right from within uh, yeah, InDesign. So I think that I've shown you uh, yeah, a quick tour of, of what Claro has to offer. The markets, we've talked about this. Uh, so uh, obviously this is a, a solution that is mainly being used in the publishing industry, but we see an increase by digital printers, specifically those that are printing photo books as well. The pre-press houses that are still out there and there are still quite a, a, a few out there, obviously are a, a target audience for this, and ad agencies that uh, are more involved in production work, uh, specifically catalog production work, are certainly a target for this uh, as well. The Claro benefits, I, I think they're clear. Uh, yeah, it, it is, uh, while quality is uh, yeah, extremely important, we've seen a significant increase in what uh, these solutions are able to do. While uh, we still see that uh, yeah, tweaking uh, yeah, the settings uh, to please everybody within an organization is certainly something that we need to go through, um, we currently uh, have little to none negative feedback on uh, uh, the, the quality that uh, the solution is able to uh, uh, achieve. What we do have to emphasize each time over and over again is that it really is a workflow uh, that is important uh, yeah, and the fact that you're able to save a significant amount of time even uh, yeah, if you would look at all the images individually and if you would have an operator approve those images individually you would still uh, yeah, save a significant uh, yeah, amount of time on uh, yeah, on retouching all those images. That's why we say that you have actually between 50 and 100 uh, percent yeah, time savings uh, yeah, on, on re retouching time uh, yeah, on those uh, yeah, images. Obviously there's the integration with the publishing systems that uh, yeah, is very important. Specifically for printers, if they're looking to increase quality, uh, yeah, the feedback that we've gotten is that uh, yeah, an, an investment in uh, yeah, Alpical Claro uh, uh, represents a, a, a more significant quality gain uh, than investments in uh, uh, FM uh, uh, screening uh, uh, and equipment uh, at a significantly lower cost as well. So if you look at the unique selling points uh, uh, or the, 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 yeah, the, the, the key advantages that it has is that uh, uh, Claro is, and this is really modesty, 
uh, uh, at least as good as some of the best competitors out there when it comes to image quality. You can imagine that we've uh, uh, gone through uh, more than one uh, comparison that has been done uh, by uh, prospects and customers um, and uh, I can without shame and doubt say that uh, Alpical was at least as good in many cases better uh, when it comes to quality. Obviously as, as, a, as technical advantages the fact that you have a very simple HTML user interface that you can access from anywhere, the fact that you have Photoshop inspector rather than just a dedicated uh, application uh, to view the before and after uh, your result uh, obviously is an advantage. Uh, uh, the fact that you have that InDesign job client to submit files directly from within InDesign uh, into the workflow, uh, the XML and web services APIs, the existing integration with publishing systems, the fact that you've got enterprise load balancing and all failover options uh, uh, is uh, 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 certainly, you know, doesn't make it uh, necessarily a simpler product. Uh, this is a full-fledged enterprise production uh, uh, product uh, that uh, has all these capabilities and, uh, uh, and, and options. And then the price. Uh, uh, this is the still the cheapest product uh, uh, on the market, the least expensive product I should say on the market. And offering all those advantages, uh, uh, it should actually be a no-brainer for uh, uh, people that are uh, looking at a solution uh, yeah, like this. I uh, uh, also share with you pricing uh, on uh, uh, version 9. This is the current version. One single license uh, of Claro uh, Premedia is at 7,000 euros. There is a, a, a yearly support and maintenance agreement that comes with that uh, yeah, and that is mandatory uh, at least for the first year uh, at 1,400 euros and then there's a backup license and then you can have unlimited job clients. So just to, uh, to, to give you an idea, uh, the inspector, the Photoshop inspector is unlimited so you can use that on as many workstations as you want. Uh, the InDesign job client is limited. Uh, uh, standard, there's uh, uh, two InDesign job clients that come with uh, uh, Claro Premedia. Uh, uh, and then uh, you've got the option of choosing uh, your unlimited job clients uh, right there. I, uh, I've m mentioned here pricing valid for uh, uh, version uh, 9. Uh, there will be a slight price increase uh, uh, for, from version 10 onwards. Uh, we're waiting for final confirmation on that. I, I don't think that it will be huge, but there will be somewhat of a price increase uh, uh, for that version 10 that has been announced to us for mid-October, uh, early November time frame. Uh, so if you are considering a, a solution like this, it will certainly be uh, worthwhile uh, uh, purchasing that before the October November time frame uh, as you will benefit from the current pricing uh, uh, on that and uh, with your support and maintenance agreement uh, will be entitled to that upgrade to uh, version 10. A little bit the conclusion uh, and the current market situation for Claro uh, we see that the skepticism about possibility of automatic image optimization uh, has evaporated uh, we've been dealing with this product for a long time and originally there was quite some skepticism on uh, whether uh, correcting images automatically uh, uh, was possible at all. Uh, I think that uh, with various products out there having proven that uh, uh, that general skepticism is gone, uh, we see plenty of publishers that have proven this concept works and it is known. Also, Claro uh, is uh, is known as as a brand and uh, yeah, as a, a fierce competitor uh, uh, in uh, this specific segment. And version nine, since version nine, we've seen much more convincing out of the box, uh, yeah, good quality without really much tweaking uh, yeah, of the settings. So that's it from uh, my end. Thank you for your time. Uh, should there be uh, yeah, any questions afterwards, uh, yeah, feel free to send them either to me at tom.pere, that is P E I R E, at 4Ps.com, or simply to our support department, that's much, much more easy, at support at 4Ps.com, and we'll take it from there. Thanks.